What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist and today I am back at it to bring you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. This time it will be a very holy and religious one because we will be talking about the ethereal supreme Aun Va. So that's right guys, it is the Space Pope of the Tao. So let's learn a little bit about these mysterious ethereals and how they do what it is they do. Let none doubt that the Tao Empire will bring unity to all. Let none doubt that now is our time. Forward for the greater good. Aun Va, Ethereal Supreme, addressing the fire cast from atop the ruins of a Grullin hive. After a long rule, the Ethereal Supreme, Aun Wei, knew it was time for his last walk, the ceremony when an ancient member of that secretive caste disappears forever within one of their mysterious temple domes. Before departing, it is tradition that he nominate his successor as head of the ethereal council. So it was that Aun Va assumed the role of the great leader of his people, assuming the title that translates best as master of the undying spirit or he that directs the greater good. This choice was long ordained, for from his beginning Aun Va displayed skills that made him a master of his caste. Even without technological aids, he was able to inspire those nearby to impossible acts, or bend their wills to comply with his wishes. When his natural talents were boosted through artificial means, Aun Va could implant powerful auto-suggestions that would last a lifetime and instill unbreakable loyalty. It is whispered by others of the High Council that when Aun Va asked a question, he would already give the responder the answer. So natural was his skill, so powerful were his methods, that those who agreed with his counsels are never sure if it was their own idea or if he put that thought in there in the first place. In all of his long life, there had only been one Tao who was able to defy Aun Va and all know that it is best not to mention his name. Upon walking from cryogenic sleep, Osha Sarah was debriefed by Aun Va alone. Never was the tale of Farsight's betrayal more skillfully told, and the story of his disregard for the greater good caused the young commander to shake with rage. Since that day, Aun Va had had no further fears for the loyalty of the Firecast, and he had set his concentration fully on the expansion of the Tao Empire. In his most epic pronouncement to date, Aun Va declared the beginning of the Third Sphere expansion. Flanked by a full ceremonial guard, Aun Va gave a slow, deliberate speech, culminating in a rousing call to arms, a demand to proliferate across the stars, an order for them to seize what must be taken. The guiding light of the greater good must reach those worlds trapped in the darkness of their barbaric ways. As his words echoed into silence, untold billions of Tao stood outside the council dome and listened in to the broadcast throughout the empire, but all bowed low as one. Aun Va praised the works of his people, exhorting to each for to reach for greater heights. He expressed wonder at the last earth cast inventions and applauded the water cast, noting that the alien diplomats neatly arrayed in attendance. To the air cast, Aun Va directed a moment of reflection for their contributions. And for the fire cast, the ancient being rose off his hover dice and offered the old hunter salute, a deed no fire warrior could witness and remain unmoved. He even offered advice to his caste brethren, the Ethereals, saying that the only way to lead was from the front. The barbaric races of the galaxy were desperate for enlightenment, and only the caste combined, working for the greater good, could bring it to them. In this way, all castes were motivated as never before. Aun Va's next act was to decry the renegade Farsight, naming Commander Shadowsun as a new hero and military leader of the Tao Empire. She would lead the Third Sphere expansion, but the elderly Ethereal vowed that she would not lead alone, for he himself would lend his counsel, personally attending and heading the forefront to guide her and the largest armies ever assembled by the Tao Empire. 
Then, before departing, Aun Ba spoke one last time, reminding every listener that personal sacrifice for the greater good of the Empire was required from each and every Tao. True to his word, during the initial stages of the Third Sphere, Aun Ba was constantly at the front, heedless of his personal danger and his zeal. His presence instilled courage, helping to drive the Fire Warriors ever forward. Other ethereals of the High Council attempted to dissuade Aunva from such hefty risks. However, they realized the futility of their admonishments when they saw the Hallowed Eclipse that were beamed back to the Empire. Every Tau, whether a worker in a factory, or the busiest sept world, or an atmosphere engineer converting the air on a barren moon base of a future colony, was required to view such materials. There, they saw the battles on the front line including Aun Va on his hover throne, entering a breach in a battered imperial fortress wall, Aun Va directing the devastating volleys of fire warrior lines, and Aun Va standing next to the new technological marvel known as the XV-104 Riptide, piles of recently destroyed enemy tanks in the background. None who saw Aun Va's noble attempts to persuade the last human defenders to lay down their arms could help but be impressed. Although the barbarians refused, and in the end were eradicated, it was still a sight that stirred something in every Tao, triggering a reaction of pride and determination. Aun Va knew that to achieve victory, he needed commitment from the warriors at the tip of the spear, as well as every citizen behind them. With the Third Fear expansion, the Empire was on a total war standing, a whole realm committed to conquest and control in an overwhelmingly hostile ga galaxy. The zeitgeist of the people was pivotal, for belief in progress and continued faith in their own superiority would sustain them in the coming years. All across the Tao Empire, morale was high, and all castes recognized that when Aun Ba to guide them, they could not fall in their destiny. The Tao would surely bring enlightenment to the galaxy, one world at a time. However, Aun Ba eventually met his fate at the hands of a Calexus assassin, who was sent to the beleaguered Imperial world of Agrelin Prime as a part of an Officio Assassinorum execution force, which occurred during the second Agrelin campaign. During this campaign, Aun Ba had become trapped in his personal bunker, located beneath the ruins of the old Hive City, due to the Imperial blockade. Somehow the Imperials had learned of the Ethereal Supreme's location and dispatched the Calexus to assassinate the Wayward Ancient. Slipping into and out of reality, the Calexus was a blur to the Tau and their myriad sensors. It passed undetected, save only for an unsettling feeling that washed out in bow waves before its sinister presence. Fear ran before him, causing all nearby targets to blast the fire warriors, Tau guards, and gun drones apart with negative psychic streams of its animus speculum, or tore them apart at close range. When he finally reached his destination, Aun Va knew that death had finally come to claim him. Wounded, his mind aflame, the ancient Tau fled for his life, as his honor guard, knowing they would die, willingly stepped between the flickering ghoul and their master absorbing the assassin's onslaught. Fleeing to the abandoned hive city above, terror followed at its heels. When Aun Va's hover drone malfunctioned, damaged from the flight or battle, Aun Va left it, moving as quickly as his ancient limbs allowed. His flight was for naught, as the Calexus assassin finally caught its prey. The end of the ethereal supreme was neither swift nor merciful. The Tao had never before tasted so deeply from the bitter cup of defeat. The greatest losses they sustained marked the end of an era and a grim entry into a bloody new age of war. When the Ethereal High Council learned of the Ethereal Supreme's death, they had no choice but to cover it up. Terrible rumors swirled around the Tao Empire, but all fears and doubts were silenced by the announcement that, in a matter of days, Ethereal Supreme Aun Va would broadcast a speech, his new statement to be beamed across the Sept worlds and beyond. It was to be a message of hope and courage, 
a message to be seen by all children of the greater good. The war gear of the Ethereal Supreme was recon armor, which was a light armor used to deflect small arms fire, and he also wielded the Paradox of Duality, which is a staff that projects a protective field whose strength grows with the power of the weapons fired into it. And this concludes the 40 facts on the Space Pope of the Tau. Let me know what you guys thought about this guy. In my opinion, I hate Ethereals. I never liked them. They're always sneaky, shady. I feel like they're very manipulative. Especially this guy. He's, uh, especially the beginning part. He's just like making people think what he wants them to think. He's, he's pushing them one way so that he can gain his, his, his own basically empire and that's what it got him now in your opinion does this make the Tao more grim dark does it bring them more close to the to the essence that is warhammer 40k let me know if not what do you guys think about these ethereals um if you like them let me know why because i don't see how anybody can like these slimy bastards so anyway guys that's all i've got for you today remember we post videos each and every day Twice a day, most days at least, so enjoy. Don't forget, we have Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages, so check those out for more 40k content. And if you guys want more lore, don't be afraid to head to the Wiki, the Lexi, or any other sites out there because the more you guys learn, the epic that Warhammer becomes. So thanks again guys, this has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate. And we are signing out.